and welcome to the Will Leach Show. I am the aforementioned Will Leach, and thank you for spending part of your day with me. Today's show is about insults. Now, I am a nice Midwestern boy. I was raised that if you don't have anything nice to say, you shouldn't say anything at all. Now, I used to be proud of this. Now I realize it just makes me boring. Today's guest is Reed Scott, a very nice man who has made a living for several seasons now playing Dan Egan, a not very nice man, on the great HBO show Veep. Veep is one of my favorite television shows ever for many reasons, but perhaps the best one is that it is better with an insult than any show I've ever seen. Everyone on Veep is constantly insulting each other all the time, and not because they secretly love each other or because it's their way of showing respect. They do it because that person's stupid ass face deserved to be insulted. I can only dream of insulting people the way Veep insults people. Later, we may try to talk Reed into insulting me the way Dan Egan insults everyone else. But for now, frankly, rather than try to tie this into sort of any larger theme, I just simply want to quote you my 10 favorite insults from Veep. One, it was an accident, okay? Much like when Bigfoot got your mom pregnant, resulting in you. Two, you're not even a man. You're like an early draft of a man where they sketched out a giant mangled skeleton, but they didn't have time to add details like pigment or self-respect. Three, you look like someone melted Play-Doh all over a flagpole. Guess who most of these insults are for, by the way. Four, you are the worst thing that has happened to this country since food in buckets and maybe slavery. Five, talking to you is like trying to explain gravity to a chicken. Six, you're about as annoying as a condom filled with fire ants. Seven, you sentient enema. I always admire the simplicity of that one. Eight, you're impossible to get rid of. You're like herpes or a MRSA infection. Nine, imagine something small has crawled up a dead cow's ass and that small thing actually dies itself. If that dead thing then farted out a sack of eggs but each individual egg is a smaller rotted dead thing, that's how toxic you are. And 10, my personal favorite insult ever on Eat Veep. You like to have sex and you like to travel? Then you can f off. Honestly, I don't have anything more here. I just thank you for letting me say those things into a camera. Okay, so the general consensus, particularly in the wake of the news that Mike Trout is going to spend his entire career in freaking Anaheim, is that baseball has no real crossover superstars anymore. That more people know the backup center on the Nuggets than the best player in baseball. Well, I refuse to believe this is true. This is America, damn it. So to find out for myself, last month I headed out to America's armpit, Times Square in New York City, to find some strangers and talk some baseball. Hello. Try an overcoat, buddy. I'm Will Leach. Now I've been told that baseball has a recognition problem. All of the great baseball players, nobody knows who they are. So I thought the best way to find out whether this maxim is in fact true is to go to here, Times Square in the dead of winter, and start asking people, just name me some baseball players. Can you name me five active Major League Baseball players? Well, I don't follow baseball anymore. Can we um, Google? Can we phone a friend? Uh, Charlie Blackman. Eric Cosmer. Mike Musakis. Billy Butler. Uh, uh, it's so hard on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> Is Billy Butler still on a roster, by the way? Are we sure? Uh, 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 Bryce. Um, um, okay, the thing that you stab a whale with. Can you name five active baseball players playing right now? Clayton Kershaw, Robinson Cano. I'm from Canada, so I could probably name a lot more hockey players. That's so okay, uh, okay. let me just see here. Hello, what's your name, man? Teresa. Teresa, what's your name? Teresa. I've <laughs> Dos Teresas. Por favor. You guys want to talk to Sports Illustrated? No? Okay. Sir, you want to talk to Sports Illustrated? Okay. I understand. He's on the run from the law. Can you name, right now, five active Major League Baseball players? Oh, five people who play baseball. Okay, it's easy. Okay, let's see. Yeah. All right. Tough guy. Let's see. Tough guy's got all five. Baseball? Uh-oh. Oh, on the spot now. Uh-oh. Oh. Derek Jeter. I don't know. I... So, no, so you don't have any for me? Uh, 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 Mike, and it's a sort of fish. Pressure's on. Uh, no, pressure. no pressure here, eh? Uh, a little bit of pressure. This is terrible. Not terrible. <laughs> I this was going to say Babe Ruth, but he's not active. Yeah, he's quite dead. Okay, you're still missing one. Mickey Mantle. Mickey Mantle. Mickey Mantle. Dead. 
Uh, dead one. <laughs> yeah. So we've learned basically people can name a lot more dead baseball players <laughs> than they can name alive ones. <laughs> My guest today plays Dan Egan on the unbelievably funny show Veep, which returns for its final season on March 31st and also appears in the upcoming Sundance Darling film Late Night with Mindy Kaling and Emma Thompson. Please welcome Reed Scott. <laughs> sure. A pleasure. Good to see By you. By all man. means, of course. Yeah. Thank you for uh, not playing too much to the studio audience. <laughs> I appreciate it. Sure. Um, all right, so uh, I... <laughs> I, ordinarily, these shows have like an overarching theme. Sometimes it'll, uh, and sometimes it gets serious. Sometimes it's Trump and the world and the NFL and that sort of stuff. Yeah. But like literally, all I we have a Veep obsessed staff. Everybody wants to talk about Veep. I've, I've, I've experienced that. I'm yes, you have. I'm curious because you know you've been doing the show for a while now. Have you felt like this is the last season? Does this feel like like the crescendo of it? Like it feels like I've I've watched Veep since the beginning because you know I'm just that good of a fan. <laughs> but uh, but now it feels like there are people I've never heard talking about Veep before. We're talking about it. now are you yeah. seeing that now like are you seeing everywhere you go yeah it's it's, it's veep frenzy it really is i think you know um it was a small show it, it you know it was hbo is sort of like a, a, a quiet rollout we always believed in it from the beginning but it feels like it started to really catch on around season three and you know we got a lot of emmy love and attention and that always helps i feel like it was only like ian nucci fans at the beginning yeah right? it really was yeah, it was like it's a thick just, of it people and like if yeah. you were if you if you knew yeah this mad scientist <laughs> right. genius from the UK, then maybe you found Veep. And other than that, maybe because you, you, know, you love Julia, because who doesn't love Julia? Uh, but yeah, in recent years, it's really started to catch on. And this season in particular, I think is our like, biggest, boldest, craziest, meanest, most vicious, most <laughs> offensive season yet. So it is, it is One of the things that's amazing to me about the show is we, we, we live in a, uh, just even the, the, never minding how politics has changed, because people are always like, well, how do you do stuff in the world to Trump? But to me, it's actually, that's hard. But to me, the harder part is people, frankly, some of the jokes that in 2012 might not play in like a social media circle yeah. now the way that they did then. Yeah. And, but I have to say, one of the things that's kind of amazing to me about Veep is you seem to somehow exist outside of that circle. Is it mm -hmm. just a matter of being funny? As long as you're funny enough, you can that's, get away with anything? That's absolutely the baseline. Yeah. You know, like, uh, David Mandel, who's you know, our, our, our showrunner, always says, you know, and it's true, we're trying to make ourselves laugh. So if we find it funny, it really doesn't matter. Um, and we find apparently a lot of horrible things <laughs> very funny. But with the social media thing, it, it was kind of cool because you know Veep almost coincided with the advent of Twitter. Yeah. I remember season one sitting down and having two of my castmates like they had to explain to me what Twitter was. See, that was and the you, original sin. Yeah, and now, then you and can't you, go back. You got to see how politics evolve through like this ever-changing you know media cycle and stuff like that. And then we get this instantaneous feedback loop via social media. It was really interesting. It is weird because yeah, I mean I'll watch the show and I'm like, well, wow, these lines are absolutely great. But if like I anybody I knew wrote this line on Twitter right now, <laughs> their career would oh, be over. Be it would be like yeah. over in a second. And uh, to me, that that's I think that's a matter of of like the the goodwill the show has kind of earned over mm -hmm. the years. But I wonder if like if you started now, like if you started like like right now and people were like, who are these people? What's going on? <laughs> if people would just be like, this show is unacceptable. They're like, like it I'm, I'm I wonder if it's just the goodwill that you've built up over the time. I'm sure there's a bit yeah. of that, especially yeah. when you see. Like they know you're not actually punching down. No, exactly. Right, right. But this season in particular, and we just had our premiere uh, last night at, at Lincoln Center, and there were some like audible groans, but it, but it was like groans of sort of like, oh my God, I can't believe they actually went there. <laughs> right. Which yeah, and 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 Armando Iannucci, our, our show's creator, was there, and he said, wow, you know, season one we were making jokes about plastic spoons that would melt in a hot cup of coffee, and now we're <laughs> no. making jokes about school shootings and abortion. Right. It's like we've we've come yeah. along. There's nothing right? left. There's nothing yeah. left. And of course, but that is you know a common thing now. Obviously, one thing I like about the show is it it's it's a recognizable politics, but it's not. Our politics. There are Correct. things that are taken from it, but they're not exactly our things. Yeah. And it's weird because when when I first watched the show, it was obviously funny, but it felt like a oh, okay, this insane universe could never actually exist in this world. And now it feels <laughs> escapist. <Yeah. laughs> like it actually feels escapist. And do you like when you've interacted with actual uh, actual like politicians? I'm sure you have. Mm -hmm. People, like people. I'm sure you've run into people that uh, that work in 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 DC. They're like, okay, yeah, we we're not you, but we get it. <laughs> they uh, love it. But like. I, I wonder if they look at you guys and, and think like, wow, we actually would love to live in this universe more than maybe the universe we currently live in. Probably, we've gotten, a, they, so far the reaction from most of DC has been surprisingly positive. Now has that changed since, theoretically speaking, 
November 16 or January you know what? 17 or all. I think we they seem like f less humor, yeah. self-aware. I, I think we stopped. Talking to him. I think we stopped, <laughs> stopped taking the pulse. <laughs> right. You know, like, it's like, uh, do not resuscitate. Right, <laughs> right. Um, but right. yeah, it has been, I don't know that a show like Veep would even get off the ground today because I think the thing about satire is it, it needs to almost exist um, with, it needs a lot of contrast. So, you know, when Veep started, you know, Obama was in office. It was a different time socially, politically, the world over. Um, so to contrast what was happening, this sort of like this brief period of, you know, wonderfulness. Yes, um, everything was perfect. Yeah, and so we, we, we peeled off the, the, the top layer, showed you how the sausage was made, and you saw these horribly despicable, self-centered people. And it, it, it was funny because it existed in contrast and you knew there was a lot of truth there. Now, you see, you, just like you said, you see these horribly despicable people. It's like, well, I can just turn on, yeah, I can just turn on the news <laughs> and watch this. They're like, they're like these people, but like so much dumber and less entertaining. Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's why it feels so. Yeah. Wow. That's now I really now I know, now I'm going to go back and watch the old seasons of being nostalgic for it's how funny. nice you were. Yeah, like, right. Actually, I know, yeah. <laughs> the evolution of meanness is remarkable. I am curious that too because you know, obviously, like you know. Uh, uh, one of the things I've been remarked apart, you, you came into the studio and people have all met you. And of course, the first thing everybody says is, wow, I can't believe it. He's so nice. As if like you're constantly like, <laughs> like you know, strangling rabbits and, uh, right. and, and cruel to people all the time. But do you, do you find it more fun to play? Like, is it fun to like be able to dig in in that way and just be mean to people? Like, are you, are you ever mean to anyone in your ever actual life? Like, do you oh, feel like, you know, like when I watch Veep, I like find myself walking around being like, I just did something that Dan would make fun of me for. Right. Like, I'll catch myself doing that. Do people in your life do that? Uh, I, I mean, look, everybody has their moments. And, and God knows if you've ever driven in L.A. traffic, I mean, some of this stuff <laughs> oh, comes out of yeah. my mouth. My, yeah. my wife, I have to edit because we have we have two small boys now. So I should probably start keeping like like a swear jar in my cup holder in the car. I, I, when I, I said I was going to do it with my kids, and I never did. Um, now, well, at one now point, they know the, the, like, the, when I'm in the car, it's like the purge. Like, yeah. There are no rules. <laughs> like It's totally fine. Daddy can say what he wants as long as he doesn't do it. Well, we had a swear jar, and I think at one point there was like almost like $1,000. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I was like, like college. I'm going to take that. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, it, it, Dan has been so fun because it's like you really get to exercise a lot of demons. I really, I, I say this a lot about Dan. It, it's been such a privilege to get to play someone so absolutely abhorrent but at the same time I'm so glad that I can put him in my rearview mirror because he's so awful like, I, I see I, I, I have a hard time watching the episodes because I see myself walk across the screen doing and saying some of the stuff I'm just like oh my god he's just I fucking hate that guy. He's the, I fucking hate that guy. <laughs> yeah. But is it hard too? Because like obviously you had done stuff before Veep and you've done plenty of stuff while you've been doing Veep. But this is still how I would say the vast majority of people were introduced to you. Yeah. And when you've gone for roles, have you had a harder time being like, seriously, I can play the romantic lead. I can be the wacky supporting character. Or... No, it hasn't been a hard time. I mean, um, the other movie that you mentioned, uh, Late Night, uh, Mindy Kaling wrote mm -hmm. it. Emma Thompson is in it. It's wonderful. I'm really excited for people to see this movie. I, I play another privileged white asshole. So, yes, I, okay, so. I, I'm, I'm parlaying one into <laughs> right. the other. That's, you know, the timing is good for that. It's they good. need a lot of those roles right now. It's, this could be my time. <laughs> yeah. I could be the one guy. I could be the one guy that actually well, finally, finally, out. finally, privileged white guys get yeah. some break, man. But no, but there's been other things. Like, I, I, I wrapped another movie where I got to play, uh, you know, a sort of good-natured cop, and I'm yeah. about to do another one where it's a, a, a writer. Uh, so it's it hasn't it hasn't sort of pigeonholed me yet, but, but that's always the fear. Like, you know, every actor thinks, you know, the last day of this job is the last day that I'll ever work, and no one's ever going to see me as anything else. If that were to happen, I'd still be cool with that because it's just been... It's if there's one last. thing you have to, like, yeah. Totally. Yeah. Go to, you know, be on Veep, man. <laughs> You're not like the kid in the serial commercial at 60. I'm like, what, what? Right. Like, yeah, there. Okay. All right, so we have a section called Frivolous Questions of Dubious Import. Yes. Well, I have questions specifically for you. I would ask no other guest. Great. Uh, okay, and so uh, the first question is, I'm sorry, we have the Entertainment Weekly cover of Not You here. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I, I'm assuming it's because yours, yours was so popular, we couldn't find any Sold in out. this office. In this office, which is literally, you know, where they make Entertainment that's right. Weekly. That's hilarious. Uh, we couldn't actually find it anywhere. Uh, that's a I'm good sure, sign. I guess that's a good sign. But I, I have to say, I've never been on the cover of a magazine. I think if I had one, I would put it, like, like large in my home. Have you done that? Or is it because you are literally flipping off the camera? Is that something yeah. you can't have around the boys? No, I think I could probably have it yeah. around the boys. I could probably have it around the boys. Are you going to do I, it? Maybe. I mean, my, I, my wife makes, she loves to make like scrapbooks of all my stuff. So it'll, it'll be around there, you know, for them to discover 
you know, when they're probably sneaking into the liquor cabinet in no. 10 years or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> sure, we'll go with 10. Yeah. Uh, I like that you married a scrapbooker, by the way. I also, also I did. married a scrapbooker. Yeah. Oh, really? So, yes. Yeah. She, 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 I have a lot fewer things for her to scrapbook. It's mostly just <laughs> lists of things I forgot to pick up. Um, okay, so you were from upstate. You're from upstate uh, New York? Yeah. So uh, I have some Syracuse. Well, this is a sport, ostensibly a sports show. Yeah. So uh, I, I have some Syracuse. Syracuse stuff. I got some Syracuse stuff for you. My alma mater. So that's the thing. So Jim Beheim yeah. uh, has been there. I kind of. For a thousand he's years. immortal. Like it, like he, yeah. he really like. Is it you? What year did you graduate? If you don't mind me asking, what year? Two thousand. Two thousand. So he's been there. He'd been there for twenty years. By, by fifteen years. By that, point. I thought they built him when they like erected <laughs> the original structure. Did you ever? Yeah. I never, like. I'm curious what someone like Jim Beheim. I went to the University of Illinois. Has has mm-hmm. had a lot of different coaches. Yep. And a lot of different people. There's no like iconic character. Like oh, he's an institution. When you're a student at a school like that, do you just like occasionally see Jim Beheim shuffling down the street, or is he sure. is he like carried by like in fed? <laughs> he's. I've I've gotten to meet Coach a couple times. He's he's a great guy. He's a regular guy. Um, but yeah, he's an icon. I mean, it, it, Syracuse is, is been in my family for literally generations. Both my grandparents went there. I've had cousins go there. I knew I was going to go to Syracuse by the time the I was go, like yeah. thirteen. Yeah. So I was really excited. And uh, yeah, you'd see him around. You know, before I got to meet him, uh, you'd see him around campus, and he was just he was larger than life. But he was such a chill guy. I'm curious. Uh, you said you met Jim Beheim. You probably met some athletes. Uh, mm-hmm. in your Who is more intimidating for you personally to be like a great athlete or a great politician? Ooh, athlete. Athlete? Athlete, yeah. I, I'm still very starstruck by, like, athletes and rock stars. Who's the cool, who is two. the literal coolest athlete that, that you've met? The, when, when, when Charles you, Barkley. Charles Barkley, that's Par- one? Like, no, no <laughs> doubt. No doubt. He, he's the coolest guy. We actually, a bunch of the cast, uh, we were doing some press for Veep a few years back, and he was in the same hotel bar that we were at, and we're all the, most. That, of the that seems a good place to meet. Charles it's great. Like, oh man, <laughs> and we just we had no shame. We just walked right up to him and said, you know, please come over. Right. Can we buy you a drink? And he was like, hell no, man. I'm gonna buy you guys drinks and bought uh, us all tequila shots, uh, and we just all started drinking that's tequila. That sounds that's yeah. And then he stuck us with the bill. Well, I mean, I, that's also no. He, <laughs> he <picked laughs> he's a super cool guy, man. He's a super cool guy. So you've been involved in. Uh, I've seen you get involved in some actual, like, real life, legitimate, sincere, earnest politics yeah. uh, stuff. I'm curious. I've, I've, you're, we are entering the primary season. Have you mm-hmm. looked over the uh, the field? I have. Is there anyone that uh, jumps out at you so far? Not yet. I, I, I'm I'm slow to warm right. when it, when when it comes to uh, you know the primaries and, and what have you. Um, Honestly, I wish I could like Frankenstein a yeah, candidate right. out of the field because everyone in the field, I think, you know, is is, is brilliant and and worthy. Um, but I don't know. It's it's too early for me to call. It also feels like a huge responsibility to put on whoever does it. Like I yeah. feel like I'm like like whoever it is, they don't seem quite big enough, even if they're great. Yeah. Because I'm like seriously, we need you to like. Yeah. Save. Every- Save the world. This is what we need to do. So, yeah, we so, need you to be so, a superhero. Right, right. Superman. So, like, yeah. I love what you did with South Bend, but yeah. I literally need you to save the world. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I don't know. I, I, I'm excited to see because I am I'm passionate about politics, and that sort of predates even my right. involvement in Veep. I just always really had an, an interest in it. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be a weird race. I, I hope that they don't start to cannibalize each other. That's yeah. my big fear. Yeah. It's because it's a big field. Yeah. We're, all the messy. we're all on the same team here. We're all on the same team. So. Um, yeah, man, it's gonna. God, it's gonna be a long two years. I just got a part of me oh. wants to get it over. I felt like last time was like a long fifty years, and now it's just yeah. It's just gonna be yeah, time has just be, screeched but. to a halt. Um, okay, so uh, I asked one question before we we're gonna do a little thing that. I, uh, but I asked one question of every guest mm-hmm. uh, before we do our little uh, little little surprise for me apparently. Um, but uh, and I, I asked it sincerely because I worry about these troubled times. Mm-hmm. Do you, Reed Scott, think that we're going to be okay? Like, do you think we're gonna be all right? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I I have close to unshakable faith in in humankind. Oh, um, still, I, yeah, I do. I mean, I, I, I look. I think we I think we screw up a lot for sure. But I, I think we also have the capability of of bouncing back from that and learning from our mistakes. Okay. Um, you know, it's it's an ebb and a flow. Um, yeah, you sip, sip the unicorn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take a big switch. This is straight ether. It's just all so, uh, bourbon. Yeah. It's like, I need to, I could. I, I, that's a calming drink. That's yeah. A calming drink. That being said, I, I, I don't think there's no place for complacency. I don't think you can ever give up and say, like, oh, we're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. I, I, don't, I don't bury my head in the sand. I try to roll up my sleeves. But you and do get, think we're going to, if, if enough people do that. I do, yeah. I think we I certainly worry. have the capability of, of being fine. I think we just got a hell of a lot of work to do. I worry. 
<laughs> okay, so um, all right, so here is the thing that uh, that uh, that the staff decided to do. Yeah. Because you are so good at uh, delivering insults uh, on Veep, and I assume in life, uh, they <laughs> I've not seen these. I do not know what these are, but they have written five Veep esque insults for you to deliver about me. Oh yeah. Okay. Yep. So uh, so I've not seen them. These are the cards. I've not seen. I'm not allowed <laughs> to look at them. Oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna put on my my uh, face of uh, my stony face of internal fortitude. <laughs> uh, see, you're okay. already laughing. <laughs> They're good. They're good. Your, okay. your staff is right. very right. very talented. Right. They, they right. would they, be very welcome on. Okay, on, here we go. Hit, hit me with the first one. Okay, so um, in no particular order. <laughs> oh, this is not this is not a Christian. No, no these the are okay. just. They're all. They're all okay. good. Got it. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll start off small. Okay. okay. You look like a limp handshake. <laughs> you started off small. That, that's I, I'm, I'm telling you, wow. man. I'm, I'm doing the best I okay, can. Okay, let's see if okay. I uh, posture up. Posture up. <laughs> we can do this. We can and do this. This is one of my favorites. Find my centered place. You corny, quizzical hasty. The closest you've ever been to an Emmy is sitting next to me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that part is unfortunately true as well. So uh, okay, uh, go. Being the co-founder of Deadspin, I mean, come on, that's like saying you gave birth to Rosemary's baby. You created something truly evil. Uh, great. Actually, not even the co-founder. I actually did the whole thing. <laughs> oh, no. Um, <laughs> you look like the type of guy who would put his finger on his own lips to shush himself. Oh, that's definitely true. <laughs> Sometimes I get very carried away. Um, you know, God, this show would be so much better if it was called The Will Leach Dies and only has one episode show. Oh. And that's just mean. <laughs> that one. You need, no, you need to find out which member of your staff. The sad wrote part is that. that was not even. And on then give the that person card. a raise. He just give that person said that a raise. <laughs> oh. um, Okay, what next? Okay, how many, how many more of these oh, are they, there? They, There's a lot. There's they, a lot. They prep me. There was like wow. a stack. I <laughs> yeah. sort of like, I tried to, I tried to whittle it down. down. We didn't even know you were going to. They, they've, they've been working on this <laughs> since before they even knew you were going to be. Um, before there was a Veep. <laughs> so um, we're going to. Okay, here we go. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. Okay. Your wife must be deaf because, my God. Oh, <laughs> oh yikes. Withering. Your staff loves you. Uh, keep going. Um, and there's another one. And mm. I, y your wife gets to play a part in this one, too. Wonderful. Like, you look like you'd still be nervous to ask your wife out on a date. Okay, that one is actually true and probably written by my wife. <laughs> she and we have another surprise for you. Oh, no. Come on. In. She, 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 was, she was supposed to come on stage, but she left you. That's actually so. She's actually not a part of this at all. Well, thank you for doing that. You, hey, um, man, anytime. I appreciate that. Uh, this is, of course, Reed Scott. March 31st is the last day of Veep. <laughs> They're apologizing to me in, the, in my ear. Are they really? As if they believe it. Uh, Reed Scott, Veep, as Dan again, and of course, Boston was also always uh, in uh, late night, coming out, uh, I think in a few months, coming out. Uh, June 7th. Uh, June 7th, June, June 7th. 7th. So uh, March 31st, Veep, it is, was wonderful having you until the end, but. Uh, yeah, that, no, 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 that, that, that feel, I get that a lot. Until the, I get that a lot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's, actually, that's actually the first day of my wife, actually. Feels that's right. actually how that. Feels right. Ended. Uh, <laughs> she's gone forever. This has been The Will Lee Show. Please come back uh, to SITV, Amazon channels, or wherever you're. Will leeches are sold. Goodbye. <laughs>